Welcome back to uh, GotWire. I'm Adam, and today I have Ubiquiti's new UNAS2 network attached storage. It's powered with 2.5 gig PoE++. They ship you a 2.5 gig PoE++ power injector. If you don't already have a switch, they can do it. And then they also ship you a little ethernet cable that comes with it. And it also comes in black. This one here is white. Black is shipping in October of 2025, their website says. And on their website, it is $199. So basically $200 for a two bay NAS, which in my opinion is a really good price for a two bay NAS, especially from a really nice brand like Ubiquity, but also I'm a little biased. Full transparency, I bought this with my own funds. They didn't send it to me. So all my opinions are my own. Nobody's paying me to say anything good or bad. So with that said, we'll go ahead and get this stuff all unboxed and I'll show you all the features and a little bit of the interface on my laptop here. We'll start with the little ethernet cable they send you. It's a little nice braided ethernet cable. I like the feel of it. It almost feels like cloth. And I think it's transparent. So if you have a, eth I think they call it ether light switch that has the RGB, it'll glow through the end here. But I don't have any of those, but this is a really nice decent length ethernet cable. It's probably about two foot. This is the PoE++ injector that they send you. This one here says it'll do 10 gig. So that's nice. You get a 10 gig PoE++ adapter, but the network attached storage here will only do 2.5 gig, so. So this is what it looks like, just a normal PoE++ power injector. So now we'll get the UNAS2 unboxed here. It's fancy how they uh, do the unboxing experience. So you get the UNAS2, you get a little instruction booklet, and it looks like you get two regular Phillips head screws. Not sure what those are for. You got a nice little screen on the front. And then on the bottom, you got your 2.5 gig ethernet port. And then this is just a little button you press here and this whole tray slides out. And then this is where you load your hard drives, your two hard drives. It looks like it only does SATA, so it doesn't do SAS. And it looks like it'll only support hard drives clipping into here. Uh, you might be able to get an SSD in here, but you'd probably have to like two-sided sticky tape it or drill a hole through the plastic so you could screw it. And it'd be hard to get the SATA connector lined up in there. But I'm sure you probably could put an SSD in there. Just reach your hand in there and press the SSD on the connector. It'd be kind of jank, but you could put some SSDs in there, I guess. I know this is a Western Digital Blue, but this is all I have on hand. So I'm just gonna stick this two terabyte Western Digital Blue drive in here. Probably gonna be pretty slow. I think it's only a 5,400 RPM drive. So if any companies wanna send me some hard drives, my email's down in the description. And it's just a toolless install. You just press it down in here. And then on the side, it has a little tab. It says press to release. So I guess you can press this in, pop out your hard drive. So it's just that simple. And then you take the little drive cage here, you put it in the right way and then click her in. And then now all we got to do is get our cable connected to the PoE++ side of this, plug it in on the bottom and then get her plugged in. So I got it plugged in, the screen lights up with their Ubiquiti logo here. And then you get the blinking light down there. I guess letting you know it's booting up. And then on the front, once it boots up, it says plug in cable, cause I don't have anything plugged into this PoE++ injector. I just have it plugged in, so I'll power this up. And then I'm assuming once you plug in ethernet cable, it'll show you your IP on there. So let's try that. Now it says ready for setup, download the app. I had the Unify Network app shown on there, but I guess you could do Unify Protect or Unify network. So I run PFSense at my house. I also run Ubiquity equipment. So in my case, I can either log into my Ubiquity equipment and see what IP it got. I can look at the screen on the front or I can log into my PFSense box, go to my DHCP server up top here, status DHCP leases, and then go down here and it actually named itself UNAS2, which is pretty cool. And I can see it's got 192.168.4.28. And there it is. It's got a cool little animation that pops up. So you can name your UNAS2. So we'll name this YouTube UNAS2. You can either create a UI account if you don't have one, or you can log in with yours. I'm gonna hit sign in and sign in with mine. So here you can restore from a backup. Once you get this all set up, I'm assuming you can save a backup somewhere and you can restore it from backup if something bad happens to it. But we're just gonna hit continue without backing up and then wait for it to finish setting up. It says setup complete. So we'll click on go to dashboard advanced accept the risks and then of course we have to wait for it to do an update so after updates you have to log in with your ubiquity account if you chose to use an account with it you can also use it without a ubiquity account but i logged into mine so first thing we're going to do here in the top right is switch it to dark mode way better and then you have to agree to the terms so we'll click on start 
Unified drive, it shows you how to put the drives in. That's kind of cool, but we'll hit set up storage. And I only have one two terabyte hard drive in here, so I have no redundancy. And storage pool one, I'm assuming we have to hit add drives here. We'll select our one hard drive, protection zero. So we're just on free ball this. If that drive fails, all the data gets lost, but that's fine. I'm gonna buy some other drives for it later. All data on selected drives will be erased during the reformatting. This action can't be undone. So make sure that you get no important data on your hard drives you stick in here. Creating storage pool one, do not power off your YouTube UNAS2 or remove any drives. So we'll wait for this to format here. And I actually just got an email from Ubiquity that says storage pool lacks data protection, which is kind of nice. They tell you that, you know, if you don't know anything, if you just have one hard drive and you go, oh, yeah, I'm protected and actually lets you know. So that got done. So I'm going to go ahead and click on all files here and it says shared drive example. So we're going to go ahead and rename this. We'll just rename it to YouTube. Save, confirm. Well, you have to create a user. So in order to make a user down here, probably behind my head, it says users, active users. You just hit the little plus sign, create new user. So I have mine right here. We'll just name one that says YouTube and then we'll hit create. So for assignments, file services and time machine credentials, we'll go ahead and hit a check mark here. We'll assign it a username and then we'll assign it a super secret password. And then we have to give it access. So I'm gonna click on shared drives. We'll hit YouTube here add but it also sets up unify identity for you to make it easier if you're like a business but we're not going to do that so we'll hit skip all right to connect to this now that you have a shared drive and a user it's really easy on windows it actually tells you how to do it on windows you just hit the settings cog and then click on shared links or sorry services and it says here smb it gives you the ip address that's for mac and then for windows you just do slash slash the ip address so you can search that in the windows file explorer but for Linux, you have to open up your file explorer, hit other locations there, and then enter server address. You do SMB 192.168.4, you know, the IP address of your server. And then you do slash, in my case, it's YouTube, and you hit connect. And then it'll ask you to type in your user credentials. It says work group in the middle, but you just leave work group. But now we have a empty folder here. So we'll go ahead and try to move a file onto it. So this is the first screen recording I did for this. So we'll move this file over to it. And that file was only 67 megs, so it wasn't that big. So it instantly went over there. So if we click on it, it should pop up. Yep, and it popped up. So now we're gonna run a iperf test from this UNAS2 to my Unraid box. And my Unraid box has a 10 gig connection. So the bottleneck is obviously this. So we should see around 2.5 gigs. So the way you turn that on is you hit settings, go down to control plane, go to console, and then you click on SSH. You agree, confirm, and then you have to set a SSH password. All right, I finally got iperf3 installed on the UNAS2. Um, you have to make sure you do an update before it'll find it. So I just pulled up my terminal on Pop OS here. And as you can see up here, SSH root at the IP didn't work. You have to do SSH root at the IP and then type in your SSH password. If you're on Windows, I believe you can use PowerShell to, and type the same command SSH root at 192.168.4.28 or you can use putty in windows in order to install iperf you have to do apt get update let it update all of its repositories and then after it updates you type in apt slash get install dash y iperf3 and that'll install iperf3 on here so i already have a server listening on my unraid box so we'll do iperf3 dash client and then i type in the ip address of my unraid box that's running iperf and as you can see, we're getting pretty close to two and a half gig. We're getting 2.21 gigabit per second. And in my opinion, that's pretty fast for a $200 NAS. We'll go ahead and run it again here. That one was a little bit faster, 2.35 gigabit per second. So in my opinion, this thing is a great value for $200. And like I said, I bought it with my own money. Nobody's paying me to say that. I just really like it. It's really easy to set up and it's really fast. You know, 2.5 gig networking with just, you know, regular spinning mechanical hard drives. Kind of wish it was five gig or you know even 10 gig but uh, maybe they'll come out with a version in the future that has a faster ethernet port and two drives is okay you know one for all the storage and then one for redundancy and i believe you can do backups to like other cloud storage providers if you wanted with this so that's really cool and i really like the screen on the front here it shows your throughput megabits per second shows how many drives you have installed and then you get your little 
LED indicator light there on the front. And I like the fact that it's PoE++ powered. So you can stick this anywhere you have a network jack and you can just power it up. But thanks for watching. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you went down there and hit that subscribe button. And while you're down there, go ahead and hit the like button. Leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. Tell me if you're down by one of these. I also have a Discord down in my description. So if you want to join my Discord, show your home lab stuff, you know, just talk. I have that link down there. I also have a YouTube partner program link where you can pay like $5 a month and you get behind the scenes footage and you get access to my videos before everybody else. So consider clicking that link down in the description too. But thanks for watching. I'm Adam and I'll see you guys on the next one.